So this launch of the new generation iPhones is really interesting. For one, Apple ditched the Roman numerals, thank God, and they also went ahead and eliminate the R series, if the 10R was even going to be a series. 11R just turned into the iPhone 11. So since it's now the flagship phone, is the iPhone 11 really the true consumer phone for everyone? And that's exactly what we're gonna go ahead and discuss about why the iPhone 11 isn't a disappointing phone, nor does it look like it's gonna be a failure. So the iPhone 11 to me looks like it's the most perfect iPhone for the vast majority of consumers. And so in today's video, I want to go ahead and cover the big major highlights of what makes this iPhone so great. For starters, there's six unique color options to choose from. And no matter what color you pick, there's no price difference. All of those still retail for the same price of $699. Kudos to the family, the couple that actually picks the green and the purple one, because to me, the purple one kind of looks like a shade of pink. So this could be Cosmo and Wanda. So yeah, kudos to the family that actually goes with this combo. So anybody could find the perfect one that suits them, their personality. That price is unbelievable because I was actually honestly expecting Apple to raise the price because they easily could have, especially since Chera's fees went up, prices got more expensive to import from all the information we've been hearing from the news recently. I'm sure we were all surprised that that's the starting price. And that's not just impressive. The rear glass of these iPhones is said to be the strongest glass on any smartphone. I hardly doubt it, but we'll see about that. But the rear glass is now impressively made out of one single block of glass. And the new lower down the middle Apple logo looks great, especially with the iPhone text in the back removed. That is now gone for a much cleaner look. Which honestly, it's most likely just gonna get covered by a case or something. But I know there's some of you guys are actually rebels that don't use cases. If that's you, vote up right there for me. I wanna know what's the ratio of how many of you guys actually don't use cases. Spatial audio surround sound by Adobe Atoms. It's supported on the iPhone 11, not just the Pro, which I can't wait to hear and test out. And other improved hardware is the new Wi-Fi 6. It's gonna be supported on the iPhone 11, just like it is on the Pro. With Wi-Fi 6, when you connect to a Wi-Fi network, it talks faster to that router and is more efficient than ever before. It's also gonna get faster LTE, not 5G, but still better than the original LTE. So we gotta wait until we get our hands on it to see if there really is a noticeable difference to see what that really means. But the main big major changes is that new A13 Bionic chip. I could literally spend five minutes just going over a new process what am I doing with my hands? But I could literally spend like five minutes just going over everything what Apple already said. But instead of doing that, this is the quick summary. It's powerful. It's more efficient than ever before. It's currently the most powerful processor in today's market on any smartphone. And to give you a better understanding how insane this new processor is, the last generation, the A12 Bionic chip, that processor is still found on top of the list on mobile benchmark scores. Because underneath that, it's the Samsung Galaxy S10, which was released earlier this year in the spring. And it's said by many tech engineers that A13 Bionic chip is expected to outperform even the next generation of Android phones. Apple's engineers always have been known to be doing an excellent job in its iOS to be heavily optimized for any iPhone. So although this new iPhone doesn't seem like it's gonna have 12 gigabytes of RAM like most modern day Android phones now have, in reality, with Apple iOS, it doesn't need it. And of course, you can find the typical features since it has the glass back. Wireless Qi charging support is supportive. It can also fast charge, but unfortunately, unlike the iPhone 11 Pro, it does not come standard with an 18 watt power adapter. So you're left with the USB-A to lightning cable with the same generic power adapter that we should all be already known and loved with. Now, besides the external LCD screen, everything else of this phone is literally new components. For instance, the front-facing camera now is a 12 megapixel camera, which now has support for Slofies. Very creative name, Apple. Not really. Just leave it at Apple to start like a weird odd trend. Now it's only a matter of time to see other Android phones start innovating a very similar thing. But the Face ID biometrics is said to be 30% faster and will work further away at even greater angles. The rear dual cameras on the iPhone 11 are both 12 megapixels that are both capable of recording 4K at 60 FPS. And that second lens isn't a telephoto lens of what everybody was expecting it to have, but instead Apple gave it the new ultra wide 12 megapixel lens. And just like the 11 Pro, night mode is also supportive on the iPhone 11. And based from the photos that we got, the examples we saw by Apple, I mean like 
it looks good like the colors it's actually amazing i mean even in a very low lit environment this looks really promising so in general it's really just sharing parts from the iphone pro 11. the only lens that it's missing is the telephoto lens that the pro has but i'm sure even the iphone 11 can still digitally zoom the only part that's shared from a previous model is just the lit with display which many users that own the iphone 11 had no complaints about it overall that display is still nice the colors are cool and no, of course, it's not gonna outperform the OLED display that's found on the iPhone 11 Pro. That's on an entire different level, but for day-to-day -day use, daily tasks, amazing, it's doable. It will get the job done for watching videos, photos, playing games. It's a large 6.1 inch screen that looks fantastic and there was no complaint from last year users that own the 10R. It's an excellent screen. So again, in general, all the parts that it shares is parts from the iPhone Pro, which is an excellent win if you go with the iPhone 11. And another new improvement is also the water resistant rating. It's not as close as the iPhone Pro. That one could be submerged a little bit deeper than the iPhone 11, but compared to the 10R, the 10R was only rated to be one meter underwater while the iPhone 11 is rated two. So yes, it too also got an improvement in water resistance. So the value that the iPhone 11 provides, it's truly amazing. It's been a while since Apple actually released a phone that's really made for everyone. But that's primarily all the good stuff that I've seen about the iPhone 11. If you guys wanna add some to the list, feel free to comment that down below. It could be bad too, doesn't matter, balance things out. Now, if you're left debating if you go ahead and pick up a Series 5 or are you better off with a Series 3, go ahead and check out this video right here. I go ahead and cover that. And then this video Video array over here is a video that YouTube is recommending for you. They believe you're gonna enjoy it, so definitely do also go ahead and check out that video and let me know down in the comment section if YouTube was right. But that's gonna be it for this video. See you guys later.